Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we will talk again about magnetic field related to electric current, straight line electric current, and we will have two electric currents parallel to each other. That's basically what we are talking uh, today about. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens. It's presented on website unizor.com. So if you go to this website, you have to choose the course, Physics for Teen. And by the way, there is a Math for Teens, which kind of a prerequisite for this course. You do have to know math. And in the Physics for Teens, um, you might choose the uh, electromagnetism uh, subject. And uh, when the next screen opens, um, this is the magnetism uh, of the electric current topic and uh, one of the lectures in that topic is this one. I do suggest you by the way to use the website unizor.com because every lecture as you see it it has notes and very detailed notes it's basically like like a textbook and the site is completely free there are no advertisement no sign in necessary although you might actually do it if you want if you would like to participate in the process in the educational process all right so let's talk about um, electric currents and magnetism first of all i would like to remind you something which we have been talking about um, it's called lorentz force and the lorentz force is the force which is exerted by the magnetic field onto the straight line current. Well, on any current, but we, will talk, we were talking about straight lines. So if you have a magnetic field, this is magnetic field lines, and we are talking about uniform uh, magnetic field. So all the lines are parallel to each other. Now, how can it be uh, arranged? Well, consider you have some kind of a very big um, horseshoe uh, magnet. So this is the north, this is the south. So in between the north and south, uh, you have relatively uniform field. And there are obviously some other forms. Uh, now, so let's consider you have this field. And you have perpendicularly to this field a straight line current. So this is magnetic field. And this is a straight line current, plus minus. It goes from plus to minus. This is the definition of the direction of the electricity. Not related to electrons, obviously. So, what happens? Well, when this is happening, there is a force which is perpendicular to both of them, to magnetic field lines and to the uh, current line. So, Basically, since my magnetic field lines are parallel and lying in this plane of this board, and the current also lies, so it's two perpendicular directions. So what is the perpendicular to both? Well, it's this direction, perpendicular to the board. And the only uh, question is, what's the direction? Towards the board or outside of the board? Well, there is a rule of the right hand. Actually, there are two rules of the right hand, but I usually use the one which is uh, magnetic field should be entering your um, your hand and the thumb should point to the direction of the current, in which case the fingers points towards the board. So my force goes from here to the space behind the board. So that's the direction of the force. And the force is proportional to I, which is the um, electric uh, current, amperage. It's proportional to L, the length of this uh, the length of this current. And it's proportional to something which we called B, which is magnetic intensity of, uh, intensity of the magnetic field. So that's basically the F, the Lorentz force. So this is just a very brief um, remind, uh, rem reminding of whatever we were talking before. Now we will use it for some very interesting purpose. So, 
let's consider we have two wires and let's consider them to be parallel and uh, directed towards the same uh, direction. What happens? First of all, as you know, and again that's something which we have been talking about in the previous lecture, around each straight line current there is a magnetic field which is formed by the mere movement of the electrons inside the wire that that's basically a, a, a condition when the magnetic field exists around this wire so it, the magnetic lines go in this way now that's another either the rule of the uh, right hand which means if you will uh, wrap your fingers around the wire in such a way that the thumb points to a direction then the fingers actually go in exactly the same direction as magnetic field lines that's how we determine it. so the same thing here so we have magnetic field around each um, straight line current. Now this magnetic field lines are circular and by the way they don't have north and south poles. This is magnetic field which does not have the poles because all of these lines don't have the beginning and end. They are basically um, uh, circled onto themselves and there is no point where all of them are um, coming together. No matter, that doesn't really matter. What is important is the following. Think about how these magnetic lines, and they are existing on obviously on every radius, it's like all the lines, magnetic lines of the same radius are making some kind of a cylindrical surface with the axis uh, uh, being this uh, current. So if you will take a bigger radius, the radius which actually exactly equal to the distance between these, and let me look at this picture from left to right. So my current lines are just dots, and my circular magnetic field is this one. So what happens with a magnetic field line around this one, which goes through exactly through the point which signifies my current line. So my two current lines are perpendicular to the board. So I'm looking on this picture from this side. And I'm talking about magnetic field uh, around this particular, this particular um, uh, current which is exactly on the distance equal to the distance between the wires. So the direction of this, you see it's this one. It's this one. So my current is this and the direction of magnetic line is this. At this point, obviously, they are perpendicular to each other, right? So, because at this point, direction of magnetic line is exactly downwards, and the direction of this is towards the back of the board, right? What happens? Well, we have a magnetic field which is perpendicular to the wire. There must be a Lorentz force. Okay, so let's think about what is the Lorentz force, direction and magnitude. Well, again, my one uh, uh, direction, direction of the magnetic field is down. Direction of the uh, current is uh, 
towards the back of the board, so it's this one. So what is the perpendicular to both? Well, that's actually the surface of the board, right? If this is one vector and this is another vector, which is goes behind the board, then the perpendicular to both is basically along this line on the surface of the board. Now, what's the direction? Well, let's talk again about this uh, right-hand rule. I have my magnetic field going into my uh, hand, so it's this way, and my thumb is supposed to direct towards it's towards the back of the board, so it's so it's this way, which means my direction of the force is this way. So there is a force which is directed along the surface of the board towards perpendicularly to this one, which means perpendicular to the tangential line, so it goes straight to the um, center of the circle, which is this particular uh, wire. So, at every point, at every point of this particular current, there is a force which is pushes uh, this wire towards this uh, center of this circle, which is this wire. So every point of this wire is attracted towards this wire. That's what's happening. Now, situation is absolutely symmetrical. If you consider the magnetic lines around this and how they affect this, so let's consider this this magnetic line. It's exactly the same thing. So, um, magnetic line at this particular point is vertical up, right? The tangential line. The um, current goes uh, perpendicular to the board, behind the board. So, what is the uh, line which is perpendicular to both? Well, that's the line which is on the surface of the board along this line. And what's the direction? Well, let's again use the right-hand rule. So my hand is supposed to be receiving the magnetic lines, okay? My thumb is supposed to be directed towards the current, which is behind the board. So my fingers point this way. So this is... So, when you have two current lines parallel to each other. From each point there is a kind of attraction to here and from here to here. So the whole lines are actually are trying to get together. They are attracting to, attracting to each other. So two parallel lines with the same direction of the current are experiencing this force which basically pushes them together. This is um, an experiment which is actually was made by Ampere, the French mathematician and physicist, um, some time ago, like 200 years ago, whatever. Um, and the force which is actually exists, which exists between these two wires is called the Ampere force. Well, not always, but I think there is some kind of a um, <laughs> attribution uh, problem. Certain things are the Lorentz force sometimes is also attributed to Ampere, like an Ampere law or Ampere force. Well, right now that doesn't really matter for us. I mean, it's probably a matter for those guys, but they're not here anyway. So. The force exists, and in this case, it attracts each other. Well, let's change slightly the picture. Let's direct one of them towards this, and another towards opposite direction. So again, it's two wires, 
and uh, they are parallel to each other, but the direction is opposite. Now, what happens with these forces? So, uh, in this case, we will have the following. First of all, the direction. Let, let me just wipe it out. So again, we will look at the picture from the left. Now, the top one will have, uh, this is the point of the top one, and it goes uh, behind the board. And this is uh, the bottom one, it goes towards us, perpendicularly to um, to the board. Mm, usually, schematically, uh, it's uh, usually it's represented as as an it's a back of the arrow, and this is the front of the arrow. All right. So you have the. You know, the, like a uh, bow and arrow. So this is where the tail of the arrow is. Okay, so this one goes this way, and using the, uh, the rule of the Lorentz, um, the magnetic field is directed this way. I usually use, by the way, the corkscrew, the uh, the corkscrew rule, which means if you are turning the corkscrew this way, it goes towards uh, behind the board. Now, this is direction. So now let's talk about the direction of the force, the ampere force. Let's call it of this one in the field of this guy. So the field is directed this way, and the current is directed towards us, perpendicular to the board. So what is the line which is perpendicular to both? So I need the perpendicular to this one, and to, so one vector is this way, another is this way. So the perpendicular to both is lying in, inside the board, inside the surface of the board. That's basically a perpendicular to both this one and this one, right? So what's the direction? Again, let's use the rule of the right hand. My uh, field line is supposed to uh, be part of the... Uh, it's supposed to come into the hand. So how can I arrange it? This way. This way it comes into the hand. Now, the direction of the... Uh, uh, of the current is towards us. So my thumb is supposed to be this way, right? So th my thumb goes this way, outside of the board, towards us. My, la my magnetic line comes into the hand, so the fingers point this way. So this is repelling force, you see? Now, absolutely symmetrical if you will consider the magnetic field of this guy, of the bottom wire. Now, it points towards us, right? So, uh, magnetic field is supposed to be directed uh, how? If it points this way, then I should... Okay, this is my corkscrew rule, right? So that's the vector of magnetic field. Now, um, my hand, right hand goes this way, and my thumb goes behind the board. So that's the direction. So my, thumb, my, my, my fingers point upwards. So as you see, we have a repelling force. So, in this case,
forces are repelling. So again, two parallel lines with the current, two parallel wires, if you wish. If they are, if uh, they have the current is directed the same way, they attract each other. If the currents are opposite, they repel each other. And this is the ampere force. Okay. So, this is something which the guy called Ampere, Ampere, um, was researching. And at that particular time, people didn't know that electricity is related to electrons or anything. It was just something, uh, and something needed to be measured. What's interesting about this, that obviously if you have certain value of the current, and let's say it's the same value, the same current, let's say we have the same battery, the same battery, plus and minus, and you have connected to both one line and another line. So this is uh, minus plus minus plus. So that goes this way. No, oh, sorry. Where is my plus? This is minus, and this is minus. Uh, I think I'm. No, we don't need this. We have two wires already. And these are going to this. Okay. So we have two wires this one and this one parallel to each other, direction is the same, since it's the same battery, the um, uh, intensity of the electric current is exactly the same. Now, what's important is, and Ampere obviously understood it, the greater amount of electricity which is going through these wires, well, in our language, the greater amperage, and amperage is obviously called after ampere. So, the greater the force must be. And obviously experiments show this. So, if they, for instance, put one battery and observed certain force, and then they put two batteries parallel to each other, so contributing to each other, and they have, and uh, they have or, or rather sequentially, then to, to increase the voltage, right? You have to put it sequentially. Um, so the greater uh, electric power, the greater um, amount of electricity going through the wires, the greater the force will be. So he was thinking about this from the different perspective. He didn't know what is the electricity, that it's caused by electrons. Electrons have certain charges and the amount of, basically the amount of electrons moving at the same time uh, through some kind of a surface, that, that what actually constitutes the electricity. He didn't know what it is, but he wanted to measure it. And what's interesting is that the force of attraction uh, or repelling, whatever you connect these things, is dependent on the electric current. So he was thinking that he can measure the electricity, the strengths of electricity, the strengths of the flow of electricity by the force. And he has established a unit of electricity. So he took some kind of a measurement and um, as a result he was saying that, for instance, the unit of length of the wire which positioned, w when the wires are positioned from each other at the unit of, of length distance, and if the uh, force of uh, attraction or repelling is equal to one unit of force, whatever the unit of force he was using, definitely not Newton, <coughs> that would constitute the unit of electric current. 
So that's what he said exactly. So the unit of length of the wire here and here positioned at the unit of length distance if they are attracted to each other at the unit uh, of force then the current which is going through these guys is a unit of electricity so you can measure it so he assumed that the force is proportional first of all uh, force between these two wires repelling or attracting force is proportional to the electric current that was his assumption and uh, based on this assumption he established the unit of electric current called one ampere well nowadays we are basically using the same unit but we define this unit differently we are defining unit as basically one coulomb per second but at the same time we have established the coulomb in a special way in such a way that one coulomb per second would constitute the same amperage as ampere some time ago established for his um, unit called ampere I'm not sure actually he called it ampere but anyway he was he has established the unit of electricity which right now we call ampere and we are basically using exactly the same unit of electricity and we have established Coulomb to be such a unit of electric charge that Coulomb per second is equal to ampere, one ampere. By the way, um, it's something which came to my mind. How do you measure the force between these two, um, attracting or repelling force? Well, you can think about a very simple experiment. I mean, it's just basically how creative you are. But this experiment just came to my mind. What if you have two wires, and uh, let's say this is connection, and this is the wire which goes perpendicularly. And this is another connection, this is another wire. So basically, you have to have um, uh, two connections. Uh, let's say you have one connection from this to this and you have another connection from this to this so you have two wires they are hanging by these two threads from some kind of a support and there is an electric connection to through this let's say plus minus plus minus so you have these two wires but now I'm looking from this side now they are hanging freely they are freely hanging on the threads and there is a current which comes through this so what happens in this particular case well if let's say the current is in exactly the same direction then this thread will go to this position and this one goes to and they are attracting to each other right so they are swinging on these threads and they will swing closer right well if they swing closer if you know the weight and know the angle this is the same angle and you have the weight mg equals p, p. so basically what happens here you have weight p you have attraction f and you have tension t and you have an angle this is the simplest mechanical problem which we have basically solved many times when I was um, uh, during the lectures on the mechanics subject uh, that's very easy to establish what is the value of F uh, force F to have this uh, angle Phi knowing the uh, the weight of the wire 
So if you have the weight of the wire, you can definitely find this particular force. That's it. And now you can establish, basically, by putting different electrical current to these um, wires, you can establish the connection between the wire, the, the current, and the force. And that's how you measure the force, and that's how you measure the current. Basically, that's it. So my purpose was to explain this ampere force, ampere law, that two wires, if they're parallel with the current, direct current in each of them, they are either attracting to each other if the current is directed the same way or repelling if the current is in opposite direction. Um, read the notes for this lecture and uh, on unisor.com that's uh, probably just another view um, uh, uh, for the same things and uh, I put some pictures there so that probably is also beneficial much better pictures than I was drawing here okay that's it for today thank you very much and good luck